Hi everyone and welcome to The Crows Show brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith. For Crows fans at least, it's a football free weekend as players take a mid-year break. Later in the show, we'll hear what they do to relax for a few days. Also today, applying the polish, taking promising players to the next level. So defenders, get at them. All right, we're ready. But first, the Crows' successful bid for a place in the AFL's inaugural women's competition means the clock is well and truly ticking to be ready for next season. Adelaide's historic partnership with the Northern Territory offers young women a unique opportunity to play sport at the elite level. We know planning and preparation is well advanced and players have been training with their respective local clubs for months. So how much work is still to be done? Before you know it, you know, it'll be October, um, we'll be into pre-season, um, we'll have our lists compiled. Uh, so I think between now and when we start, you know, we've got some clear strategies in place, um, working with the SNFL and the, the state teams from both here and NT as to what we want to do. Um, our immediate challenges in the next month or six weeks will be um, coaching structure, um, staff, administration, um, welfare particularly, I think is a really crucial piece of, um, of that platform. Northern Territory have had a, a women's competition up and running up there for a long time. Um, I guess there were some questions on the depth of talent here in South Australia and um, we saw it fit to, to have a joint venture with AFLNT and combine the talent pool uh, collectively between us and, um, and NT. Certainly we want to play you know, home games in, in both here in SA and, and in the, the Territory. For the Territory itself, the most important thing for us is what it does for our community. You know, we don't have a lot of national teams to follow, so uh, um, certainly the general public um, and football lovers are going to get behind the team. It's an interesting area how they've broken the list down. Um, you know, you've got marquee, uh, you've got pre-signs, you've got locals. Um, we want to continue to, to develop um, further down the, the line with the, the junior pathways and the academies. Um, so yeah, it's another bunch of rules and regs to, to get our heads around. And a lot of the girls come through um, playing football through school, you know, up until sort of 11, 12, 13. Um, now they've got a connected pathway that they can actually go to the national competition. So we, we think that we can now um, you know, compete with all the other um, elite sports across the country, whether it's cricket, whether it's netball, basketball, soccer. Thank you for being here today for what is truly a defining moment in the history of Australian football. I think it's the capacity for us to now look at um, you know, women's talent across the board, uh, across the spectrum, whether it's uh, nutrition, whether it's trainers, whether it's administration, recruiting, you know, coaching. Um, I think all of those areas now are significantly open for, uh, for the women's area and I, just, I think it's great, I think it's exciting. The feedback that we've had has been very positive. Um, our supporters are really um, interested in where that space is going and I think by the time we can get the girls on the paddock and improve some skill sets, um, you know, put them through some pre-season, get them fit, I, I think it'll be a, a league that'll be um, closely followed. Some challenges ahead, but certainly an exciting time for the club. The Crows are in the enviable position of being able to take players from country and suburban teams to top up their Sandful side. Let's take an insider's look at how Adelaide's development coaches are fast-tracking these players to ensure they're up to the demands of State League action. All right, let's go, boys. So it's a new drill, so we'll ease into it the first couple, but by the end we should be really going, all right? Humming the ball around, hitting targets, and trying to defend as much as we can. If we don't have these players, we can't field a side sometimes on the weekend, so um, these guys are really important to us, um, and that's how we treat them. All right, reset, reset. Speed of foot here, that's what we're working on. Boys, listen, there's no marks. So defenders, get at them. All right, we're ready. Go! No marks, no marks. Quick mechanics. Hey boys, let's make sure that last kick we've got to finish. But let's do it with some purpose. Because at the moment, we're going through the motions, we're missing target. Um, it's a really good program for these kids because um, they get to um, learn from an elite environment. Um, we train the type of drills we train with our AFL guys um, and it's a great opportunity for them to get fitter, um, become a better player and hopefully go back to their clubs and improve their club you know, in a whole as well. Keep defending. You've got to talk to him, Hilly. All right, out of there, wind orange. All right, bring it in. 
I know you boys can talk your head off when you're in the change rooms, all right, but sometimes when you come out in the field, you shut up. All right, let's make sure the communication's open. All right, let's go. Let's go, keep it off the deck. Quick mechanics. Use your voice, plenty of voice. Good, well done. Fast hands, fast hands. Oh, two from two, yep. Keep going, in and out, in and out, in and out. Sharp, sharp, sharp. Well done. Well done tonight. As we said, it was only going to be a short, sharp little session. Um, good luck to those boys that are playing on the weekend, the association. And um, we'll be in touch with you this week if we, uh, if we need you for the SNFL. Um, the guys in our development squad are all under the age of 23, so there's um, plenty of time for them to develop and you know, become a mature rookie. And um, hopefully one day we can see one of these guys join our list. After the break, Alana reminds us how the club reaches out to kids in remote areas. And could you imagine supporting the Adelaide Sharks and not the Crows? We were looking at options like the Sharks because of the uh, close to the, the, the beach. Um, we looked at the Lakers because of West Lakes. Welcome back. Few players know the frustration of suffering repeated injuries more than Kirtley Hampton. Throughout his career, first with the Giants and now with the Crows, he's been plagued by injury. During a break in his latest spell on the sidelines, Kirtley made a Skype call to school kids in his hometown of Alice Springs. The initiative is part of the club's community program, which encourages players to interact with youngsters in regional and remote areas. Hello. <laughs> My name is Kirtley Hampton. I'm from Alice Springs. My family's from there. My mum's Aranda and my dad's Walpuri. We did a Skype session with uh, Laramba School. So it's a community only about 80 k's out of Alice. They don't really get too much out there. So I think that'd be the first Skype session, session they've ever done with, a, with AFL players. So they're a little bit, little bit excited, but a bit shy at the same time. So me and Wayne just try to you know, ask them a few questions about what they do at school. Um, and that sort of stuff, if they play footy, who their favourite player was, which of course is Eddie Betts. I probably just started playing a bit of, bit of kick when I was about six. I come from Alice myself, um, so opportunities, not too many opportunities there. And, you know, we never got any, any AFL players coming to us, speaking throughout the week, doing clinics with us or anything like that. All right, well, thanks for having us, and we might talk to you again soon. All right, see you then. See you later. <laughs> doesn't take much for them to you know get excited and you know look forward to things so if they if they know they're going to be talking to AFL players you know it's something that's like it's huge to them pretty rough patch since I've been at the club um, pretty frus frustrating it's just something that comes with you know comes with playing AFL it's a day by day thing the main thing is you know that I've I've been able to run um, but we've just got to be pretty careful with it um, make sure it, you know, it doesn't get sore and we're doing the right rehab exercises for it. Um, we've just got to really take our time with it and make sure that when I'm back it's 100%. You know, it's, it's our goal's been um, the first game after the bye. So that's been the goal since, you know, since I got surgery, mapped it out week by week. Fortunately, Kirtley is close to a return in the sample and we certainly wish him well with that. Red, blue and gold, they're the colours we love. But they could just as easily have been blue, green and white. And we could be cheering the Sharks and not the Crows. Hard to imagine, isn't it? So what happened in those early days when the club was taking shape? One man who was there is Adelaide's first CEO, Bill Sanders. 
AFC squad member Simon Tregenza took the first historic steps on football park in the new gear. The club settled on red, gold and navy blue from dozens of different designs. Well the original uh, design uh, took uh, some time and when I say some time, uh, four weeks. It was a result of uh, some work done by a couple of our people on our board, uh, mainly Ed Betro who was in the sporting goods business and Ed had a lot of contacts and um, uh, the likes and Ed and his wife Isla actually came up with the final design, the Hoop Guernsey, which I'm pleased to say uh, has, has been maintained. The new Adelaide Football Club jumpers, shorts and socks arrived at Football Park late last week and the Crows will be the first team to wear the new AFL type short. Uh, the state colours became the obvious choice for the new club. Uh, there were several options that we were looking at. Uh, it was purples and greens and blues and, and the likes, uh, trying to create something different and something new, but we always came back to the red, blue and gold, and uh, I think that sort of stood the test of time. We had sashes and Vs and uh, uh, quite a, a, a varied range of designs to, uh, to look at. I think it's good. You know, uh, I sort of turned up today, I'd, you know, first time off, so I didn't really know what to expect, but I think it was good. The colours are good and good design. It would seem now that Crows was uh, just the way to go, but we were looking at options like the Sharks because of the uh, close to the, the, the beach. Um, we looked at the Lakers because of West Lakes, um, but a lot of those names were under copyright. Strong public support swayed the AFC towards the swooping crow. Two designs have been struck, the official club logo and the other for merchandising. We came back to uh, Crow Eaters, which uh, South Australia has been traditionally known as the Crow Eaters. Uh, and then we, of course, finished up with a shortened version of the Crows. And once again, I think that's, uh, that's proved to be the right choice. We swim as one? Doesn't quite have the same ring, does it? Well, earlier in the season, we caught up with Hugh Greenwood as he set about resurrecting his football career after a five-year stint in basketball. Already, he's showing some promising signs in the sample, so we thought we'd check on how he thinks the transition's going, and it's also a good excuse to meet his furry friend. We've got Jax from a breeder down in Wyala, an awesome breeder down in Wyala. Um, he's six months old and he's a French bulldog. We've always wanted a Frenchie, um, but living in the States and travelling a lot, it just wasn't ideal for my partner and I. Um, and then since we've moved to Adelaide and we plan on staying here for a while, um, yeah, we just we just wanted something that was going to keep us occupied and, and something to keep us company. See it, good boy, Jax. Good boy. He's a bit of a snorer though, so he sleeps on the bed and keeps cursing eye up of a night. Here's Greenwood now on the left, the former basketballer. Sneaks it in, quick reply from the Crows. So I think this time last year was, um, I was sort of coming around the corner into making the decision to play footy. Um, so a lot's happened since then. It's taken longer than I thought. A lot has changed and uh, a lot of things are new and a lot of things I've had to adapt to. Um, certainly the running's been probably the biggest one. Um, you don't really have positions as such anymore. You're basically running all over the ground. So um, learning patterns of the game, um, reading different cues of the game has been challenging, but it's been fun. From the feedback, I do things well when I have the footy. Now it's just about getting it more, and that's that comes with with my motor and um, being able to run and, and and spread from stoppages if I want to develop into a midfielder. I'm um, starting in the forward line at the moment, but long term, I think the plan is to play midfield. But that all comes down to how hard I want to work. And the feedback again is my stuff in close is quite good. And I think that's just from for the basketball background, just everything sort of in tight in a condensed area. So um, I think that's why I think I'm eventually going to the midfield just with just being in tight and uh, and having a lot of guys coming at you from different angles, being able to to read the game in that, that aspect. Still to come on The Crow Show, Brody Smith gives Mitch Grigg a grilling and we'll find out what players do to turn off. Nothing's off limits when Brody Smith takes time out with one of his teammates. So thanks to Aussie Ripper Rose, we wondered what he had in store for Mitch Grigg, one of the few AFL players who has a job away from football. Mitch Grigg, welcome to the Ripper Rose. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Smithy. 
Don't be nervous, mate. <laughs> we start with footy. Obviously, you've got uh, the difficult task of trying to break into the AFL midfield this year. Um, how's your footy going down at SNFL level and how, what's the goals going forward for the rest of the year? Yeah, obviously, you know, our side this year is uh, quite tough to break into. We've got a lot of guys that have stepped up and, um, you know, Sino you know, coming to the club as well, that outside balance, you know, that's sort of the position I'm looking to break into. So, um, you know, each week I'm just continuing to work on my, my D transition and, um, and obviously my keep bringing what I, uh, what I bring to the team as well with my kick. Alright, so enough of that, we'll go to the off-field stuff. Go easy on you to start with. Uh, your day off, you're doing a bit of work? Yep, so days off I uh, do my day of landscaping, uh, getting my Cert 3 in landscaping, so uh, that's some, one of my interests out of footy and uh, something I'd like to get in, into after footy, so yeah, loving it. Alright, hang on. I did have some notes. Oh, that was all of them. And uh, how is your relationship with Riley Knight? Yeah, it's, it's a yeah, it's a bit of a roller coaster, a bit up and down. <laughs> He's obviously uh, dating, so not really my stepsister yet, but uh, my dad's partner's daughter. So. Uh it's, it gets a bit interesting when we've got family functions and Riley rocks up. Uh, no, nah, he's, he's, he's a good fella, so um, as long as he doesn't hurt Char, he's, he'll be right. <laughs> That's very good. All right, thanks for joining us, Mitch Greg. All right, thanks for having me, Smitty. No worries. 12 games down, 10 to go before the finals, but for now, players get to enjoy a well-earned week's break from the physical rigours and the mental stress of high-pressure football. In Under the Coach's Roof, brought to you by Revolution Roofing, we find out what they're up to during the bye. That'll do it. What a win. Adelaide have stunned West Coast on their home turf. The bye is a really good chance for the players to refresh both physically and mentally. Um, we see it as a really important part of the players' season. You know, they've been working for a long time now and for an it's an opportunity for those guys to go home, spend some time with the family, spend some time away from the club and we re really promote that. Living around footy circles and elite sport in general, it can be a bit of a bubble at times. We look for opportunities during the year to give them a break and check out mentally and it really helps them hit the back end of the season and hopefully finals with some real confidence. In the bye, the players get four days off away from the club. In that time, we'll give them a take-home program. There won't be too much in the program, but it is really important that they keep on ticking the legs over because when they return, they're expected to play with some real intensity. The boys are allowed to travel. Um, where We try and promote that, uh, but most of the boys are staying within Australia, going home to see family, and just going somewhere a bit warmer north. Not all players will get a rest. Um, some of the players who have had an interrupted season so far need to use this opportunity to play a bit of catch-up. So these guys will be finishing off some specifics in their conditioning program or their strength program, hoping to hit the ground running when all the others return. A bye, no such luxury in my day. Stay with us, still to come, pack your bags, we're going on a holiday. And when you're not just another face in the crowd. In a few months' time, players will scatter far and wide to find a new holiday destination or revisit an old favourite. Thanks to our friends at Flight Centre, John O Beach takes us on one of his best getaways. My favourite holiday destinations are in Thailand. Went there a couple of years ago with a group of mates and uh, had, a, had a really good time. Nice people over there and uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, we went elephant riding, go-karting, uh, we did like water sports, um, yeah, and just a lot of sightseeing around there. Uh, yeah, I'd really like to go to Noosa in Queensland, I reckon that'd be a nice little spot, I've heard good things about it. Just going for a bit of a surf and it's uh, pretty relaxing up there, good weather, so I'm um, looking forward to doing that maybe at the end of this year. Now this is the segment where it pays to be seen at the football. If our face in the crowd this week happens to be you, make sure you contact the club before 5pm next Wednesday, be ready with some photo ID and you'll receive a merchandise pack from Chemist Warehouse. The remaining 10 rounds feature five home games, so don't forget you can enjoy the excitement of seeing the Crows at Adelaide Oval by purchasing a special three-game membership. Just go to the club website, afc.com.au, for all the details. 
When Wayne Carey was traded from North Melbourne to Adelaide, it was one of the most talked about player movements in the game's history. Next week, former football manager John Reid tells us what went on behind the scenes. Well, that wraps up today's show, brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to your company again next Sunday at 11.30 on 7. We'll see you then. Bye for now.